Hey there! Welcome to How to Ace Photography. I'm Joanne. This slideshow is meant to answer the question, what is ISO? When you press your shutter button, you're letting light into your camera to hit your sensor, and that's when your image is created. If you have an older camera, you would have film, and in the new digital cameras, the sensor has replaced the film in the cameras that we use now. You get the perfect picture if you get the exact amount of light hitting your sensor. And by exact, I mean the exact amount, down to, in some cases, one eight thousandths of a second. And there are two elements that your camera uses to let the light in. One of them is the shutter. Some people refer to it as shutter speed. Your shutter opens quickly or slowly, depending on how much light you want to let in. The aperture is another one. The aperture is actually in your lens and it opens wide or, or it gives you a very, very narrow opening. And between the two of them, they work together to get the exact amount of light on your sensor to create your beautiful picture. The meter in your camera lets you know how much light you're letting in. The meter will tell you when the camera considers that the right amount of light is being let in. When you're in manual mode, that's really up to you and you can change it a bit depending on what you want to see. But your meter is there as a guide. If you're not in manual mode, let's say you're in shutter priority or aperture priority mode or even program mode, your camera makes these decisions. And the camera is pretty good. The camera usually makes just about the right decisions for you. Now that we have that covered, let's look at ISO. You can change the ISO settings on most cameras. The ISO settings range from, in some cameras, about 200 ISO and some of them go way up to 6400, those kind of numbers. You get the best quality picture when you're closer to the 200 side. When you're closer to ISO 200, your sensor is not very sensitive at all. So you need a lot of light coming into your camera to get a good picture. When you're up in a 800 ISO, 1600 ISO, those kind of numbers, your sensor is very, very sensitive and you don't need a lot of light to come in to make your picture. Now we have three elements to consider when you're letting light in. We have the f-stop or the aperture, the shutter speed and the ISO. You can change all of them to manipulate the picture and get the picture that you want. Once you've got the perfect amount of light coming in, if you change any one of those elements, you need to change at least one other. It's always a balance between the three. So why would you have different ISO settings at all? Some people say that you should always use the 200 setting. I personally use the 400 setting more often than not. But I do use the full range and there are different times for different things. During the day, say if you're at the beach in the middle of the day, the light is very, very bright and the 200 setting is perfect at that time. But if you're taking sports pictures in the afternoon when the sun's going down or any kind of action shots very early in the morning or when it's very cloudy, you may find that you're not getting enough light to get the action that you required because to take sports pictures you need a very fast shutter speed. And it's those times when you would set your ISO to as high as it will go sometimes. You do lose the quality, but sometimes it's worth just getting the picture. There are many different makes of cameras, different types of cameras. There's a digital SLR, the point and shoots. And you'd find that when you look at these different ranges of cameras, they have different sensors in each of them. And some sensors are better than others. You may find that your digital SLR has a much better sensor than your point and shoot. You will even find that some digital SLRs have better sensors than other digital SLRs. On my camera there are two ways to set the ISO. I can look at the top of my camera and I can press the ISO button and change the dial and that will change my ISO very quickly. Or I can go into the back of the camera into the menu and look for the ISO settings and choose the one that I want. One thing that you should do is go into the back of your camera and look and see what you've got. Look at the range of your ISOs. Do you have a very small range or do you have a big range? And while you're there, while you're checking on that, check and see if you have auto ISO. I use auto ISO sometimes when 
I want to use a particular manual setting, but the light is changing on me and I don't want to be looking at my meter all the time, I might put my ISO on auto. But when you do that, you need to keep watching it because you may find that your light fades very, very quickly. And all of a sudden, instead of using ISO 400, you're up in 1600 or 3200 and you haven't even realized how much the light has gone down. You can use Auto ISO when you're in program mode or any of the other modes as well and it's just as useful. If all of your modes are on auto, your camera makes all the decisions and sometimes that's great. The manual settings and aperture priority settings I use more when I really want to control my shot and get exactly what I want. Your camera is probably not the same as mine and you may have to visit your manual to find out where your ISO settings are. Before you visit your manual I want you to take up your camera and look at the back. Look at the settings and see if you can figure it out for yourself. The more you go into your camera, the more you look at the settings, the more you play with it and the more you see what you've got, the more comfortable you'll get with your particular camera. You'll also get more comfortable playing with the menus in general of all cameras and when you get a new camera you'll be much better off if you're comfortable with the menus in general. Go and practice taking pictures. The more practice you get, the better you will get. Happy shooting!